Confused about the significance of path signals in Satisfactory Update 5? In this short video, I will break down the chaining of path signals and the use of path signals to control flow through complex scenarios of track, such as roundabouts. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me in this detailed look into path signals. Let's dive in by starting with a simple example, both visually and technically. Here we have a straight section of track with some path and block signals on it. Let's break down what is going on in more detail. First of all, a short little review from my previous videos, which if you haven't seen them yet, check out this playlist card in the top right corner to see the foundation of what I'm going to go over here. The trains plan the route, and as of the upload date of this video, take the shortest path to the programmed destination. If that ever changes, I'll try to update the description with the new information, or make an updated video on it if need be. A train looks ahead as far as its current momentum will take it to check for red block signals, or any path signals. In the last video, I showed you how to hide trains from signals by using multiple block signals in close proximity, but you can't hide a red signal from a train in its current path. The train will not make an emergency stop here, but rather slow down naturally, since it can look as far as its momentum will currently take it. So, looking at our example here in regards to path signals, when a train arrives at this location, it will reserve the path starting at the first path signal through the entire block after the last path signal's block in its path, to ensure that it could clear an intersection if need be. Let me break it down again. Train passes this block signal, immediately reserves this path if it's currently clear and unreserved. Notice block signal, path signal, block signal, block signal. Everything in here is reserved for this train's path. Now, what is cool is that path signals can be additive if they are on a train's planned path. Let's look at that. This path now has multiple path signals in a row. The train now reserves all of this. Cool, right? Path signals can be chained to extend through more complex networks. And the awesome part of this is that as soon as a train exits one of these areas between path signals, it is automatically released to be reserved by another train that might cross or use this section of track, increasing the amount of traffic that can flow. So let's put this simple straight track theory into practice on a roundabout. I built this roundabout after eight or so attempts at getting it right, and I'm still not happy with it due to the fact that the tracks laid around corners are not symmetrical from a center point as they get larger, and we can't play switches back to back currently. So I have colored foundations, so you can sort of see it if you would like to try to build it, but I'm not going to do a how to build a roundabout tutorial in this video, because it would frankly suck. Maybe if we can get blueprints soon, I'll be able to release this, and maybe track building will get some tweaking, but currently it can be awkward. I did manage to get three sections of track in each quadrant for a total of 12, so I was able to bypass the back-to-back -back switch building requirement of an easier to build eight section roundabout as you can see here. I also increased this roundabout's throughput by adding slip tracks around the direct connection 90 degree corners. But trains still have to merge to a two track mainline eventually, so it doesn't eliminate the roundabout's weaknesses entirely. For signaling, I have used multiple path signals both on the entrances to and inside the roundabout to ensure that deadlock never occurs. But play with your approach block signal distances to see if a train going slowly entering the roundabout is better for you than a train racing into the roundabout. Remember, you don't necessarily want the entire roundabout being reserved for 10 seconds or more while a train approaches it from a distance, so find a good balance of speed and reserve time. And remember that path signals behind the reserved path chain are opened up for reservation again as soon as the train is exited, so another route might open up before the roundabout has been entirely cleared. You can pause the video here for my placement of signal types for this roundabout. Let's look at another couple ways to use path signals to your advantage, especially in the early game when you may not have set up a full two-track mainline for bi-directional travel due to having limited production resources. If you recall in one of my previous videos, I had mentioned that block signals can be used like one-way signs on roads to control the direction of travel on a track. Well, let's look at a way to use that to our advantage. Let's say we need two trains running on a single track, bi-directional mainline. Currently, you would end up with two trains nose-to-nose -nose at a signal, deadlocked. 
What if we used path signals to control the movement of those two trains on one track, and used block signals to control the direction of travel on a couple of slip tracks? Well then, our trains could use those slip tracks as passing sidings and reserve the track from one slip to the next using path signals on the exit of the slip tracks. Let's look at this in action. You can see here there are only four signals on this entire circuit. Do not place any signals on the runs between the slip tracks, as the path signal needs to reserve the entire section of track for one train at a time, and more path signals won't really add anything to that. Also, don't place signals anywhere except on the slip itself. Signals on the point or facing side of a switch will create deadlock as a train will wait in the path of the opposing train. So I hope that gives you a few more ways that path signals can be used and even chained together to make your train usage even more satisfactory. Leave a comment below if this helped you and consider sharing it with a friend who needs it. Thank you again for your time. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And check out these videos here to see if there's anything there that is of interest to you. See you next time. Thank you.